Guadalcanal, Tarawa, Saipan, Guam, Iwo Jima, just a few islands dotting the Pacific half a world away, served as proving grounds for soldiers, sailors, marines, airmen, and coast guardsmen in the Pacific theater during World War II. The fortifications of the Imperial Japanese Army are still scattered across the Pacific. Relics of a world war that tested our nation and defined our world order. More than 75 years ago, U.S. forces began a bloody island-hopping campaign to root out heavily entrenched enemy forces throughout the Pacific on their way to Japan. The U.S. Coast Guard was central to this amphibious assault, providing seasoned surfmen forged on the treacherous bars and beaches of America's coasts. But in war, they not only timed the sets, tides, and breaking waves, they dodged gunfire and mortar shells to land Marines and soldiers on heavily fortified islands. Their courage and expertise became legendary across the Pacific. In the first U.S. offensive of World War II, four Coast Guardsmen braved heavy enemy resistance to land troops from the 1st Marine Raider Battalion onto logging in Solomon Island. Harold Miller, Glenn Harris, Daniel Tarr, and William Sparling received silver stars for their bravery on Tulagi, and are namesakes of our newest fast response cutters. At Guadalcanal, also known by U.S. forces as the Green Hell, Coast Guard legend, Signalman First Class Douglas Monroe, died saving hundreds of embattled Marines. As our service's only Medal of Honor recipient, his memory is still honored and revered today by Coast Guardsmen and Marines alike. Besieged Marines near Chiron Kanoa Saipan were low on ammunition, medical supplies, and reinforcements. Shallow reefs prevented larger landing craft from reaching them. Under intense enemy fire, Lieutenant Junior Griggs Clifford Benson and Truman Harden found an unmarked channel in the reef, which opened a stream of artillery and supplies to help the Marines ensure victory. On the 75th anniversary of the liberation of Guam, the Coast Guard was recognized for bringing the first wave of liberators to the island's shores on July 21, 1944. Coast Guard Lieutenant Commander F.E. Minor commanded the flagship for U.S. forces in the Southern Attack Group, landing troops and tracked vehicles on reefs off the god. U.S. forces met heavy mortar and small arms fire. However, they prevailed, marking a strategic victory in the Pacific Campaign. The Coast Guard's legacy lives on in the Pacific, and with the resurgence of great power competition, the role of our service has never been more important. We work tirelessly to prevent conflict in a region where sovereignty and rules-based order is being tested. From Australia to the Korean Peninsula, from Fiji to Guam, our far-reaching influence builds partnerships, increases capacity, and ensures sovereignty across the end of the Pacific. Just like so many years ago, our courage and expertise today sustains our legacy in the Pacific tomorrow.